So ladies, gentlemen, fellow Kryptonians out there, welcome to a, I guess you would say, a dedicated video to the, the big rumor slash leak that has been put out there. So right off the bat, right off the bat, I want to put a spoiler warning because there's some people like, oh, baby, you're spoiling the movie, even though you're just talking about a rumor. Look, look. Just in case anything I go on to speak about, also speculate because we're going to go over a lot of like a, a timeline and my theories for the, the movie, just in case any of it happens happens to be near the truth, uh, I, I don't recommend watching. This pertains to the villain, if you will, of the film. I did go over this briefly the other day in my in one of my videos, but since then, this is starting to get a lot more traction because uh, bigger scoopers are really putting it out there, are pretty adamant that this is what is happening. So, getting into this now, we have here from DC Film News and a bunch of other places that Daniel RPK is confirming confirming Ultraman is the main villain in Superman. He is a clone made by Lex Luthor, so no multiverse shenanigans. And what they would mean by that is obviously, you know, Ultraman is from the crime syndicate, basically a uh, alternate, darker, evil-ish, if you will, Justice League. So they're ruling out, okay, so if Ultraman is in this movie, it, it would be a clone created by Luthor, not the multiverse opening up in a little Ultraman flying through who looks just like David Corrin sweat and is just going to go re. Now, I spoke about this in my video the other day, and I brought up something that I found very, very interesting. And that was when James Gunn welcomed Nicholas Holt on board as Lex Luthor, December 11th, 2023, granted this, you know, doesn't exactly confirm anything, but it, I, I just have to say it makes things very interesting. At the very end of welcoming him, he puts the emojis of a DNA sequence, a freaking microscope, and then like a rounded bottom lab flask. And of course, this could just mean that, you know, Luthor's gonna be very sciencey wine as per, you know, a lot of Lex Luthor iterations. But, you know, you could also look into that being like, was this our first hint with the DNA, the lab stuff, the Cadmus cloning of this all, potentially? Uh, maybe, maybe. It is very intriguing. So now linking it to this latest rumor, well, this is exactly what I want to dive into in this video, especially combining it with all the other theories that we know, and then we're just gonna kind of feel it out together. And I can't wait to see your comments down in that comment section as well. But despite this, I do wanna stress before going on that this is still just a rumor. A lot of the internet, if you will, has been reposting this now that Daniel RPK has outright claimed it. And I've heard through the grapevine that a lot of these scoopers are very adamant about the details and the source saying this information. But you know, I'm still like, so it's still kind Kind of a rumor. It's kind of a situation of like you still don't know till you actually know. I just need to put that out there. Plus, one last thing here, I guess, is that Gun, as of I need to stress this, as of when making this video right now, still hasn't debunked it. But I do want to put it out there just in case by the time I am posting this and you're watching it in your subscription feed, that even if he does debunk it by the time this video posts, my eyebrows would still be a little bit raised with regards to how previously he said that the Middle Eastern plot leak uh, wasn't true. For it to then come out as true, or, or should I rephrase that as it was once true. So what I guess I'm trying to say here, if it's posed or a question is posed to gun by the time I'm filming this, something like, hey James, you know, I've heard is Ultraman in your Superman movie as the villain, as the clone of uh, Superman? He could be like, not true. And with the way Gunn answers stuff like this, that could be a true statement because you could argue he would be answering it in such a way where, well, technically the, the, the clone of Superman in the movie is more of a rendition of Ultraman, Bizarro and freaking Nuclear Man and several other iterations of clones of Superman all put into one. So the fan asking me specifically about Ultraman here is not true, if you know what I mean. I'm not calling Gunn a liar, I'm just observing stuff in the past where he, you technically can answer things like that and get away with it a little bit. And for all I know, that may happen, that may not happen. If it is happening, I just, for that very reason, I wanna talk about this anyway, whether he has replied or not. So, as you guys know here on this channel, we're going to entertain this now as if this rumor was true, just for the sake of speculating, as that's what we like to do here. Before I do it, and I swear to God I will get into 
into it. One thing I felt like I wanted to start off on is prefacing the the whole, you know, how does this connect to the plot by getting into the reaction of this leak, getting into the fans' reactions that are out there about this Ultraman or Superman clone. So a lot of people's first reaction is, you know, like, oh, it... it is that it? Is it an evil Superman? You know, and when you do put it like that, it, it doesn't seem so interesting. It, it comes across as fairly tropey because it's true. Like, what is more tropey than, hey, you know what? How about an evil version of yourself? Hmm. You know, I, I get it. Like, trust me, before we continue with this, I understand. Like, it, that, that kind of does sound like, oh, okay. Because when you do think about these past iterations, as per what a lot of people are talking about since this rumor, it does seem like, okay, you know, another project, Superman project that involves an evil-esque Kryptonian-based thing going on here, rather than that of an entirely different type of insert villain here, Metallo, Brainiac, Globo, or whoever, like, that would be different. Like, different, obviously, if it was another Superman villain like that. But what I do want to say is, while I do completely actually agree with the presentation of that observation of like, oh, you know, like another kind of, it does seem like we've had this before, maybe. When something like this is said out loud or presented that way on paper, like a Superman clone, evil Superman tropey, I do think that it can make it sound a bit too reductive than what could actually be going on in the movie, which we will obviously explore later on in this video with how I think it connects to this, that, and the other, or how things could maybe be going in general. And this is where things and discourse is like, you know, really gone into all kinds of different channels online. I've seen people talk about how we've seen nothing but this, and that's where I somewhat disagree a little bit. I, again, I'm not trying to sound contradictive here. I, I do admit we've seen similar things here, but, you know, you know, such as, oh, this is Batman versus Superman, and I'm like, eh? Uh, okay, so Lex using Superman's DNA, check. Okay, you know, I agree there, right? But a, a Doomsday clone? No. Also, is Ultraman going to become Doomsday? I, I think that's seriously unlikely. And then as for Snyder's Superman going on to be evil, um, you know, with the whole anti-life equation, I mean, sure. But the nightmare timeline of the, the Snyderverse featured in live action for all but like, what, a few minutes? So it's something we, we never truly got there with, in terms of that whole anti-life equation, Henry Cavill version of Superman. I mean, I'm not saying we didn't get it. So yes, there is somewhat of a, you know, similarity of like, a, oh, yeah, another dark Superman. But more to my point here, you know, this wouldn't even be David Corenswet's main Superman in the movie, having gone rogue like Cavill's did because of the anti-life equation. Or, you know, technically, I guess, if you want to count when he was resurrected, and he was like, wait, who, who the hell are all of you? Ultraman, and let me stress this, this clone that Lex Luthor would create would be an entirely different character for Superman to deal with in Gunn's movie, removed and separate from that of David Corenswet Superman over here. So, you know, I, I get what people are saying, but like, you know, is it really identical? No. And then some are even going as far to say that James Gunn's very use of this, you know, dark slash evil Superman clone, this Ultraman, if you will, in this Superman movie of his to kick off the DCU is deliberately being done, apparently, as a stand-in for Snyder's Superman or to kind of, you know, I guess, intentionally disparage and, I guess, ridicule what came before with, I don't know, I guess, Snyder's Henry Cavill's Superman and basically shite on it. And I'm just like, wait, wait, what? Wait, wait. Where did that come from? Like, I mean, I'm not saying this is the most original idea, but how does him doing a clone, you know, make a mockery intentionally? Like, apparently this is Gunn's main objective here to, like, put on blast what what came before. I just... Yeah, but, but yeah, like, again, you know, I'm not saying there isn't similarities because, you know, again, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, we had a plan with Luther, which involves the creation of a Superman clone using Superman's hair. And after that nuclear missile, which, you know, the hair was attached to, got thrown into the sun by Superman, well, lo and behold, 
Out came Nuclear Man, the, the birth of Nuclear Man. So yeah, not the exact same thing, but yeah, this is where I concede, if you will. I think that's the word I want to use here. Ultimately, I do concede to the idea or understanding why people do in general want a bit of a different direction if this does indeed turn out to be one of the main beats of the movie. Not to mention if you're ingrained in other aspects of Superman media, you might be familiar with Injustice Superman, whether that's a comic book or the video games. But... Regardless of that, you know, always look on the bright side of life. I know this sounds like copium. So obviously I'm thinking about, okay, with all that being said, with all that being, you know, bearing it all in mind, where could this go? How could this be interesting? How does it fit into the plot with roughly what we already know or have, you know, maybe gone with in certain popular theories? So the first thing that I've got written down here with my bullet points is that this would truly make Lex Luthor the puppet master. You know, we've been wondering, okay, who's the villain? What's really going on? You know, we've got Luthor in it, obviously. We've got the engineer. But this would mean, and not that any of us weren't really expecting this to some degree anyway, as we know Holtz Luther obviously is in the movie, and of course there was no way he was just going to play a tiny role, but Ultraman would be his instrument. And more on that later, because I, I do think the very concept of a clone being used as Luther's instrument could... You know, I don't know if I would say backfire, but it, it could be a bit more complicated than that. Now let's ask ourselves what we have so far. What we've theorized about with on the channel and just, I guess, as a collective DCU community out there. Why would Luther make a clone of Superman? Specifically here, Ultraman. And you may be like, well, why are you asking that question when he's <laughs> done it in a lot of other examples, right? Okay, you're going back to that joke, but look, but seriously, we know that from James Gunn that David Corrin Sweat's Superman is an established hero in the DCU. Words from the man himself, established hero, right? We know that he's not a veteran Superman, yet we know it's not an origin story. So maybe he's in the ballpark of year two, year three, being active as Superman. So what's also key and what combines with this in my opinion, is the reverse Kingdom Come influences in this movie, or should I say the Kingdom Come storyline in that of the source material, but we've kind of called it here the reverse Kingdom Come theory because clearly David Cronsworth Superman isn't going to be a much older, having been retired Superman returning to the world. So taking us back to the actual current DCU, if you will, with what we do know, we've talked about how this world is not new to heroes and villains. Just straight up, not new at all. We are hitting the ground running. Some people like that idea. Some people don't like that idea. You know, jumping into an already established universe. Say what you will there. But they've been around for a very long time. And possibly as a result, the, the somewhat climate and environment of heroes across the world and different countries have gotten to a place in where just like the Kingdom Come storyline, there's so many of them in the world. It's likely caused very powerful people and governments to take issue with this, with some theories even coming up to, you know, do with a regulation of sorts coming down on these metahumans. Now, I admit, that's an idea that still needs to be fully fleshed out. I don't want to get too carried away there, because obviously that there is a lot when I'm saying this, by the way, that we don't know about this movie. I do want to stress, we're not all trying to pretend to be know-it-alls here, we're just, you know, theorizing, and based off of what Gunn has teased before heavily, my god, a lot of Kingdom Come influences there, and that makes sense to apply the whole overrun world in where they're so used to heroes after decades and decades and decades, and where the status quo of things in this world with how people view heroes might genuinely match what's going on in Kingdom Come. That's probably one of the most popular things you could actually take from it and use in your already jumping in an established DC universe. And so if the world is very used to superheroes to the extent of where that's not exactly a great thing, and perhaps as James Gunn said before, this is a world in which views kindness as old-fashioned, that would give you the gist of what wannabe heroes are on the streets and cities in the Kingdom Come Superman storyline and what they're like for the most part. They, they just try and get things done by any means necessary and don't really do things like the heroes of old. But Superman, David Cornsweet is Superman here in the story, hence the reverse Kingdom Come. He's still emerging in the world, albeit active as we've already been over. He might be tackling things in a very public way, which is unavoidable, obviously, if Superman comes flying in to save the day in certain high-profile situations that could ultimately lead to, you know, pissing off the wrong people. Now, enter Lex 
Luther, Nicholas Holtz Luther. This man likes to be in control. Perhaps a lot of his public identity has been about this very subject, maybe rallying certain opinions about it. Now, de depending on what his character arc is and what his background is, even though it's been teased to be very sciencey from James Gunn, maybe you can even throw in the addition of what he's aspiring to do politically. Maybe he is the front man for holding metahumans accountable, or at least some kind of, again, regulated program. And there's lots of inspirations that have been cited, you know, by James Gunn, obviously All-Star Superman, there's Superman for All Seasons, we spoke about how this Guardians of the City in Superman for All Seasons and where Lex likes to be, you know, he wants to be the man of tomorrow, he wants to be the saviour, he wants his Guardians of the City to save, not Superman to come in and just interfere with that, so maybe there's, you know, similar ideas being taken here with how if there's that one guy who's kind of like one of the heroes of old, you know, messing with the way things are like, Luther wouldn't really like that at all. Now, I suppose you could say this is where the cloning aspect or the rumor comes in, because the idea with Ultraman that many people are automatically jumping to, of course, is that, you know, if Lex created a clone of Superman, given everything we've just said, then he can frame and defame and, and basically do all kinds of things that makes Superman look very, 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 very bad to the world. Perhaps, you know, they, they use Cadmus uh, to, to make all of this happen. You know, Lex in this version, as I said, seems to be very sciencey based on, I, I, I admit, just emojis, but, you know, this is what we have to go off, people. <laughs> this is all we got. Now you can combine this with what we heard before with the whole conflict in the Middle East plot uh, and how that all comes in here. So we, we don't really know exactly what went down with that part of the plot. But as I briefly mentioned earlier, we do know that little public situation that happened with Bassem Youssef in where he lost or put it out there to the world in an interview that he lost his role in Superman. And it turned out to be a little bit of a misunderstanding that was addressed publicly by James Gunn articles were written, Bassem Yusuf then released a video about it. But as a result of that, it turned out that this rumor of this Middle Eastern plot was true. So since then, just in case you don't really know so much about this, it was reported that due to the rewrites, Bassem Yusuf lost his role as this Middle Eastern dictator. But there would, apparently, still be a conflict that was repurposed to be somewhere in Europe, supposedly, okay? So if we just presume, you know, that, that this is true, the idea being, if there's a conflict going on in Europe that is very sensitive in the world and you have Ultraman pretending to be Superman, maybe he still flies over there and Luther's plan is to make an even bigger mess over it, which I guess just causes all kinds of geopolitical disruption and, you know, the ramifications of that could be insane. So that would make Superman look very, very problematic. And this would only fuel Luther's plan with regards to pointing the finger at Superman. And to be honest, this is one of the aspects I kind of do like about this clone, you know, uh, rumor and, and, and idea as an antagonist, because I think at the bare bones of it, you know, say what you will here, different strokes for different folks, but for me, this does put David Corrin Superman in such a nightmare hole to dig himself out of. And of course, I need to chuck it out there that David Corrin getting the chance to play two versions of himself could show off some acting range that could be pretty badass, if you know what I mean. But anyway, moving on with regards to where I think things could maybe go, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we can't forget how James Gunn is very insistent that Lois and Clark are the protagonists of the movie. This, these kinds of comments came out where people were like, oh my God, there's so many cast members being added to this movie. You know, Gunn saying things like, oh, what is less cast members than even Guardians of the Galaxy. So, you know, by the way, but he also said Lois and Clark, the clear protagonists, do not be mistaken, despite Hawk Girl, Metamorpho, this, that, and the other, right? And this movie, you know, did get retitled to Superman for a reason, even though we will talk about the former title and how it could actually link to this in a little bit. So going off of that, the good old lovely Lois Lane could have a very big role to play in helping with this situation that Superman has found himself in. So obviously on the Daily Planet side, you can only begin to imagine the coverage of this, right? And Clark is there, which is you know kind of cool, with his ears to the ground because he's a reporter, uh, a, a full-on 
journalist, as Gunn says, because that was a response to this isn't a workplace origin. He is a fully fledged reporter uh, at the Daily Planet. So Lois and Clark's investigative reporting side of this movie could really shine through with this plot and help maybe clear Superman's name. Now, as for whether they reveal how far Luther has gone to be a part of this, I don't know because, you know, would it really end with Luther being exposed and then going to jail or whatever because of his part to play in all of this? For some reason, my gut is saying me like I, I doubt it if that would truly be exposed but at the very least right the cloning or how this isn't superman would ideally be exposed i think it, it's it's really cool to imagine as we know there's going to be a lot of daily planet in this we've got perry we've got jimmy we've got all of that good stuff and we're going to see a lot of clark kent in addition to superman and i think a lot of people are desiring that and this could be one way to do it i mean it's a very relevant thing to chase up on especially where it makes you think how would lois know to trust superman how far are they along in their relationship does she know he's clark is this actually as a result of ultraman going to link into how she finds out that Clark is Superman because he's like, hey, this isn't me, or maybe Ultraman in a nuclear man esque way poses as Clark Kent because of some bloody genetic memory as a result of the cloning. Do you know what I mean? There's a million different avenues this can go down. We could talk about that all day, but you know, there's some ideas for you to play with. Now, the former title, Superman Legacy, perhaps, you know, could link to this with regards to. Gunn has changed that title now, but the legacy part of it, I do think can be interpreted in multiple ways. But maybe with regards to if this rumor is true of Ultraman, it could be about making sure that his legacy isn't something obviously tarnished by Ultraman or his clone, but rather one that is established to the world by the end of the movie. Since again, yes, I know he's an established hero, but he's still not necessarily the Superman Superman popularity levels of Justice League levels of Superman, but maybe he will be near a bounce there by the culmination of the plot, perhaps. And a new legacy, as what I've said even before this rumor, Superman's legacy in terms of the Kingdom Come storyline, instead of him being older and restoring order and trying to, you know, get every metahuman out there to play by the good rule book and not do things in an anti-hero sense we can't forget how superman's legacy could be the reverse kingdom come thing and how he establishes a good way a better way of doing things a better <laughs> tomorrow if you will and i still think the theory that we've been going here with on the channel with regards to the engineer could still maybe be intact and when i say it that way i'm not saying as if we knew for a fact that the engineer was going to be the way I've been talking about. But, you know, a lot of articles and major trades out there have been calling her a straight-up villain. And I've been saying, as per what James Gunn said, that's a bit reductive to call the engineer a villain. I mean, we know in the comics she's not. She's more anti-hero-esque, and she's with the authority. It's as I've said, maybe she could be set up as one of the antagonists, right? In where maybe it still ultimately doesn't end that way by the credits. You know, maybe it goes among the lines of the somewhat self-righteous or, you know, wanting to do the right thing engineer maybe a bit more I don't know if the right word would be brutal compared to other heroes but as per the anti-hero-esque engineer character thinking now oh god look at what Ultraman or in my mind Superman is doing so she perhaps kind of goes after him again maybe this could be a part of some kind of um you know I don't know if I want to say task force but regulated superhuman group I don't know I do think that maybe there will be some kind of government involvement maybe in the way that heroes are operating without repeating myself from earlier. Maybe the engineer pre slash proto authority before going off to create the authority if they're not already created in this movie could be a part of that. Maybe she's, I don't know, I don't like the idea of her working for Lex, but again, she may have the complete false idea of things. That's the general takeaway here. But then when she does realize she could be instrumental to helping out clearing Superman's name. For example, her powers are so insane with her liquid nanite freaking metallic this, that, and the other, that she 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 can basically hack into things. Maybe she'll be instrumental in, I don't know, hacking into LexCorp and proving that this cloning situation, just if, obviously, she is persuaded by Kal-El himself that, hey, that, that dude over there isn't me. But up until that moment, maybe they have brushed up the wrong way and exchanged a few blows because up until that point, she saw him as a major threat, and it's kind of like, ask questions later, you know, punch him now. But then it's like, okay, well, how do... 
Superman's metahuman compatriots, as James Gunn calls them, uh, come into this. So I guess you could look at it in such a way where maybe they knew Superman because, again, he has been active. And now they're thinking, like, what the hell is he doing? Maybe there could be tensions caused there. I know this is pretty basic of me to say, but maybe, you know, he's trying to persuade them. Hey, this isn't me. What's going on? Maybe you could argue in a similar idea to what I just said about the engineer. There there could be blows exchanged with Hawkgirl being like, bro, what the hell? I'm going to come after you now. But that seems a bit too simple, if you ask me. So I would like to think that Superman's metahuman compatriots like, you know, Mr. Terrific, Hawkgirl, Metamorpho and whatnot, depending, and this is very important to bear in mind, depending, we don't really know how well they know Superman. We're, we're assuming they do already by the time the movie picks up. Maybe a couple of them do, like Guy Gardner and whatnot, but maybe not all of them do. So maybe throughout the plot, regardless, by the bottom line of it all, they come in to help Superman face off against Ultraman. Because there could be so many things that I'm not even thinking of right now. What if there is like a Guardians of the City thing in place already, in addition to Ultraman, in addition to the Engineer? So maybe this is a thing as well. Imagine at this point, the Engineer is still going ham after Clark's, or should I say the actual Superman, and you have Mr. Terrific and others. Mr. Terrific's technology, maybe, and his smarts and intelligence being instrumental into exposing this as well perhaps, maybe proving to the engineer that it's this way and that's how they get her help. But maybe they all need to go up against the engineer first as well as Ultra Ultraman. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of different ways this can go and unfold throughout the plot. And as I said, it's a bit of a nightmare of a hole for David Corinsweat's Clark to kind of get himself out of. Because that's a very scary situation to be defamed in that way, depending on how atrocious the acts are that Ultraman you know, commits. Maybe Lex will be a bit more tactful. It, it might not be straight up murder or anything like that, but it could be little subtle things to disrupt Superman's image and then maybe one big thing, for example, that conflict in Europe and just, you know, really highlighting how this is exactly how superheroes are the problem. We need to bring back real law kind of enforcement. Here's my Guardians of the Sea. This is the way it should be done. Do you know what I mean? It all comes back to that in a roundabout way. And again, if Lex is politically motivated, then my God, it could go into that side of things. But back to Ultraman himself, this is where I think things do get pretty interesting with how I, I don't even necessarily think, and this is what I mean with if Gunn actually does reply and debunk it, if you will, that he might not even, will he even be called Ultraman. I know the, the scoopers who are being adamant that this is happening are saying that it's Ultraman. And as I think with what a lot of people are saying, possibly there is a blending of multiple iterations of bad supermen, if you will. So, you know, the character is proposed, I guess, as Ultraman as the base template, right? It's not the, you know, multiverse crime syndicate version, but this is where you get the mashups of inspiration there. So it could even lead into this Bizarro-esque inspiration all without directly being bizarro either if you if you kind of catch my meaning there so lots of people are thinking it's like that superman run or with bizarro and how he could start off as like a really decent perfect copy of superman but throughout the plot he kind of degrades and degrades and that's where you kind of get the bizarro inspiration um, in this movie, or without him actually, again, being Bizarro, but I've seen some people express concern saying, well, nah, if they, if, if they do that, I would rather Bizarro from Bizarro World kind of thing, rather than, you know, having a, a mashup of, okay, here's Ultraman, but throughout his, you know, duration of the movie, he kind of degrades into Bizarro. But now going back to what I said much earlier in this video saying, but Ultraman would just be his instrument. I I've written down here, would he though? Unless you have some kind of vampiric siring or suicide squ squad bomb in your head or something. Why would Ultraman follow you know, Lex Luthor blindly, unless it's a bit of like a father situation. But again, that just only fits into the tropiness of it all even more. So, you know, I think Gunn needs to try and obviously, if this is the case, make this believable to an extent, not just some kind of grand wizardly idea of, you know, you obey me now, I created you. You know, I, I just don't think that would work very well. So of course, there is the possibility, I think, of this Ultraman, if you will. I keep saying Ultraman like that because... I think it would just be called Superman or whatever in the movie. I, I can't imagine Holtz Luther saying, you are Ultraman. Yeah, it's just a bit too cheesy on the nose. I know you could say the same thing, I guess, about Superman, but either way, I digress. Um, the possibility of Luther losing control over Ultraman. So then, 
if that happens in the movie, maybe towards the third act or somewhere in the middle portion, you would have the issue of Superman still needing to deal with this and maybe getting the aid of his metahuman compatriots. But then Luther not being as in control as he wanted to be. Perhaps he's like achieved a couple of things. But if Superman, you know, uh, clears his name, then that makes that null and void. And then all we're left with, with what Luther has created, is Ultraman uh, causing a bunch of mess, having gone able. So, you know, that, 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 that could be something like that. I know that sounds a bit straightforward, but then I just ask you to think of, you know, all the other things that they can kind of do at the same time. And, you know, that could provide quite a bit of cool action as well. But as for like the Bizarro influences, I do agree. I kind of prefer that tragic approach to that character in where he's like, you know what? Why have I been created by the end of it? Or like as the journey unfolds, he looks at Superman and sees, you know, how heroic he is. And it's, it, it, he views him that way. It's like, yeah, what, why am I doing this? I feel like that can always tug a bit of a heartstring, if you know what I mean. But again, I guess you, you would have to think if you'd be okay with this not being outright Bizarro, but Bizarro inspired, as, as I keep going on about. You know, it only makes it more Bizarro-esque, if, if you know what I mean, if he's got some kind of genetic memory linked with that of Clark. Because if he's a clone, and God knows what Luther's methods are here, he's a clone of Superman. So it's kind of really sad to imagine that he still thinks he almost is in a way if he has some kind of memories and, and sentimentalities of the same things that Clark does. So that could be pretty interesting as well. But we're going to, again, we, this is just a rumor. But if it does turn out to be true, we would still have to wait to see exactly how it would play out. And that can be said for everything I just said in this video, guys. And that was a very, 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 very long rambly one. It'd be amazing if, you know, actually you right here watching got to this point of the video. That's insane. So what do you think about it? You right here watching this video after everything I've said, maybe you started off thinking, oh, I don't know. This does sound a bit too tropey. Like I think a lot of us did and maybe still do. But after like kind of looking into it and maybe pairing it with these ideas that we already had with some tangible things we knew, some not so much, but popular theories, I have been like, you know what, I don't think it's as bad or like as boring, you know, if you want to use that word, as some people are making it out to be. I do understand still ultimately the desire for just a different ballpark entirely of a villain, not like a, hey, some kind of bad Kryptonian thing going on. Um, but if this does turn out to be the case, I don't think it's all misery. Do you know what I mean? I think there can be some interesting things mined. There was a few examples or more than a few, if you will. And uh, let me know yours. Uh, down in the comments below. But if you got this far, ladies and gentlemen, do leave a like on it. Do consider subscribing for more rambly videos just like this on the DCU and all of the respective projects that are within it because we've got 13 so far, so there's a lot of boba talking to be done. Um, but I'm going to love you and leave you now. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.